Jarrell Miller wins a 12-round unanimous decision over Johan Duopa. Typical Miller performance and a predictable result as far as I was concerned. Before the fight, I saw most people picking Miller, but there was a sizable minority of people who thought that an upset may be on the cards, particularly when they saw Miller coming in at his career heaviest 304 pounds. Personally, I was sticking with Miller all along. The 304 pounds did concern me a little bit, but not for the Duopa fight, more for fights in the future. I felt like that might be too heavy to be effective against an Anthony Joshua, a Deontay Wilder, a Povetkin, you know, the top guys in the division. But to my surprise, I actually felt he still looked relatively quick. His volume was relatively high, actually very high for a guy of those dimensions, 304 pounds, six foot four. Uh, he showed decent upper body movement at times in the fight. He was moving around the ring at times in the fight, not just coming forward. He showed very good punch variety. There was uppercuts, hooks, straight shots, jabs, body punches, overarm shots. He literally threw everything except the kitchen sink at Johan Duopa. So I don't think 304 pounds is actually too much. It, I, I, to be honest, I think it's not his optimum and I'd like to see him lighter, definitely. But even at 304 pounds, I've said this many times before and I'm going to continue saying it. Even at 304, Jarrell Miller is going to give Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder lots of problems, particularly Anthony Joshua. I think, I suspect at least, Deontay Wilder would cope with Jarrell Miller a bit better than Joshua would because Deontay Wilder is lighter and can move around the ring quicker and I think he's got better stamina than Joshua. Joshua being a more stationary target, I think it would be easier for Miller to walk him down and that is what would happen by the way people. If you're wondering why I think Miller gives Anthony Joshua lots of problems it's because Miller would be walking Joshua down. See, there have been many people over the past few months who have been saying, how can you rate Miller so much? Why do you think he's so good? It's not that I think he's so good. It's just, I think styles make fights. And Miller's style coming forward, applying relentless pressure, he's extremely physically strong. He's like an immovable object, Jarrell Miller. Very, very physically strong, huge man. He'd have, what, 50 pounds on Joshua? He'd be pushing Joshua back. Trust me on that one. And would Joshua get overwhelmed in the way that so many Miller opponents do? I think there will be times that he would get overwhelmed against Miller. I'm not saying I'm picking Miller to beat Joshua necessarily, but I do think it's a tough fight for him. Yeah, a guy as stationary as jo Joshua can move, but not that well. Certainly not as well as a Deontay Wilder. So yeah, I think Miller is... A tough fight for any of the top guys, at the very least. <clears throat> and I wouldn't be surprised if he was upsetting some of these guys and winning some of those fights. And as far as the lower tier guys, the guys just below the Joshuas and Wilders, people like Dylan White, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. I am picking Jarrell Miller to beat Dylan White. I've said this several times and I'm not wavering. I'm not <laughs> changing my view on it at the moment. Jarrell Miller beats Dylan White. Yeah, um, <clears throat> people say that Dylan White is a more rounded boxer. He's got better skills, this, that, and the other. He may well have, but you look at Dylan White versus Derek Chisora. Chisora was not relentless for 12 rounds against Dylan White. Chisora does not weigh 300 pounds. He's not 6'4". He's not in the prime of his career. And he gave Dylan White a very, very tough fight. It was a very close fight. Initially, when I watched it, I thought Chisora won by a point. But re-watching it several months later, I thought Dylan White won it by a point or two. But it was a very close fight against, you know, a Derek Chisora who's seen better days. And if Derek Chisora is having that much success against Dylan White, Jarrell Miller, who's much bigger, much stronger, throws much more punches than Derek Chisora, is much more relentless he's going to have even more success against Dylan White. And people say Dylan White has improved. I agree, he is improving. 
But I don't think he's improved enough for him to beat Jarrell Miller based on Miller's style. I think Miller would walk him down. I don't necessarily think Miller would, you know, may not stop him. But I do think he has a very good chance. And I would pick him to outpoint Dylan White and just be all over him and maul him and not give Dylan White the, the room that he needs to get his best work off. Having said that, I'd like to see Dylan White versus Jarrell Miller. I think it would be a good fight. I think there'll be a lot of inside exchanges because Dylan White, I think, doesn't get enough credit for his inside work. He's actually quite, quite good on the inside. Yeah, if you go look at the Chisora fight when Chisora was applying pressure, Dylan White was getting nice punches off on the inside. As I've said with many, <clears throat> many, many fighters in boxing, the majority of fighters in boxing, Dylan White cannot get the same kind of punching power on his back foot as he can going forward. And, you know, last time I said this, somebody mentioned the Dylan White, uh, Anthony Joshua fight where he was on the back foot and he hurt Joshua with a left hook. I think that was the exception rather than the rule. I can't remember any other time when Dylan White hurt somebody when he was on the back foot. You know, so I think that was an exception rather than rule. Generally, the Chisora fight is a good example, right? On the back foot, Dylan White was not hurting Derek Chisora. But I think it was at the start of the six when Dylan White actually managed to come forward, he hit Chisora with a left hook come uppercut and actually shook Chisora. He noticeably buzzed him. So again, as with most fighters, White can't get the same kind of power usually in his punches on his back foot as he can on his front foot. And I think that's a problem against Miller. You know, I think that's a big problem. Uh, you, again, look at Lucas Brown. Look at a sh look at a left hook he landed on Lucas Brown. Look at the shots he was landed on Lucas Brown coming forward. They were more powerful than the shots you see him throwing and landing when he's on his back foot in you know whatever fight you want to name. So, yeah, Miller for me for my money beats White. I've been saying this for a long time. He gives Joshua and Wilder plenty of trouble and <laughs> there's me going on and on about who Miller would give trouble to and beat without talking about the actual fight uh it was as I say typical Miller coming forward applying the pressure Dwyer likes to say uh what's the word he uses he says he removes the oxygen from the room <laughs> or he sucks the air out of the room that's what Jarrell Miller does he makes it very claustrophobic for his opponents in there and these big guys, you know, Johan Duopa, 250-pound man or 244-pound man, excuse me. These guys are not used to being manhandled like that because they're, ju they're just not used to the kind of physical presence that Miller brings to a fight. So after a couple rounds, you know, they're breathing heavily. They're struggling to keep this guy off of him. He's got a tremendous physical presence in the ring, Jerome Miller. And uh, yeah, Johan Duopa hung in there. Uh, at times I thought Miller could be on his way to a stoppage maybe Duopa or uh, Duopa's corner pulling him out or the referee stopping it at times it was, it was getting to the point where it was nearly there but Duopa managed to hang tough and he fought his heart out all the way you know he hit Miller with his best shots but nothing affected Jerome Miller so yeah that was where it was let me know what you guys felt about the fight in the comments. Uh, were you impressed with Jarrell Miller? Or are you still one of these people who's a skeptic of Jarrell Miller? I think people have got a similar attitude towards Miller as they've had with Wilder for so many years. Is they see his deficiencies and they obsess about his deficiencies, totally ignoring his strengths. That's what I think people have been doing with Miller for a long time now. That's what they were doing with Wilder for a long time obsessing about Deontay Wilder's weaknesses, totally neglecting the fact that this guy is a tremendous puncher. Deontay Wilder is the most precocious puncher in the heavyweight division, bar none. All right? People totally neglecting this. And remember, precocious. It's not, it's not that Deontay Wilder is just a hard puncher. He's a precocious puncher. He's a prolific puncher. Yeah? He's the most prolific puncher in the heavyweight division. Prolific. He manages to land his big shots time and time and time again, fight after fight after fight. Even when he stepped up in levels against Luis Ortiz, he was still able to land a big right hand. 
it's going to take someone very special to be able to avoid Deontay Wilder's big right hand. So you can say what you want about windmilling and all this kind of stuff. He is very skilled at landing his right hand. He is. And with Jarrell Miller, he's a very big man, very physically strong, appears to have a very good chin. You know, he's got a very short neck, Jarrell Miller, powerfully built upper body. And yeah, he carries a hell of a lot of excess body fat, but there's also a lot of muscle there. You know, doesn't seem to have any kind of punch resistance issues. Marches forward, does use pretty good head movement here and there. Throws a lot of punches. Not a massive puncher, Jarrell Miller. Nobody's going to sit here and try argue otherwise. He's not a massive puncher. But he hits hard enough to grind you down and be a problem for you, you know? Uh, somebody had, you know, again, I've seen people online saying, oh, this wasn't impressive for Miller. He should have knocked Duopa out. Why should he have knocked Duopa out? Duopa went 11 rounds with Wilder, wasn't it? 10 or 11 rounds? And he gave Wilder way more trouble than he gave Miller. Duopa also knocked out Robert Hellenius two years ago. Yeah, he got knocked out by Povetkin. and he took that fight on like a day or two's notice. He wasn't in shape. He wore, he wore running shoes, sneakers, trainers in the ring because he didn't even have his boxing boots. That's how unprepared he was for that fight. So forget about the Povetkin. Forget about that. That, that was a, a farce. That wasn't a real fight. Duopa wasn't prepared at all. And even against Wilder, he didn't have a full training camp. Against Miller, he had a full training camp. And people want to say Duopa's not a good fighter. Duopa knocked out Hellenius, a guy who went the distance with Dylan White recently. Yeah. Think about that. Duopa knocked Hellenius out clean. Dylan White couldn't do that. And that's the guy that Jarrell Miller just beat. So... Credit where credit's due. I think Jarrell Miller is underrated by a lot of fans. I think a lot of fans are going to continue to underrate him because of the fact that he is a fat guy. But some fat guys can fight. <laughs> and Jarrell Miller is one of them. He can fight. So, yeah. Let me know what you felt in the comment section about Jarrell Miller's performance. I thought it was a good performance. Uh, pleasantly surprised that he still had speed and mobility and stamina at 304 pounds. I would have preferred to see him you know, it, uh, the kind of weight he was for his last fight, which was in the 280s or, or lower, preferably. But he's got to take the weight off the right way at the end of the day. You can't rush these things if you've been big for so long because it can actually mess you up. As I mentioned before with Riddick Bowe, he was a guy who used to, you know, really go up high in weight. And when he had the Andrew Galotta rematch, he took the weight on too, took the weight off too quickly. He came into the Glotter rematch like 230 pounds or whatever it was. He came down from God knows what, 280 or 290 or wherever he was weighing in between the fight, in between fights, came down from some very high weight to 230 and he just had nothing left, you know. Lost the weight way too quickly. So for Jarrell Miller, if he's going to lose the weight, it's going to have to be a gradual thing. You know, don't expect the guy to come in 245 anytime soon. It's going to have to be a very, very slow, gradual thing. And, um... But still, even at the weight he's at, he's effective. He's relatively effective. If Miller lost the weight the right way, let's say over a course of two years, uh, gradually got his weight down and was strong at 240, I think he'd be a menace, to be honest with you. I think he'd be a men I think his punching power would improve at a lighter weight. As the commentators were saying, Jarrell Miller throws a lot of arm punches. And I think one of the reasons he throws a lot of arm punches is because of his weight. Because if you're trying to put 304 pounds behind every shot or the majority of shots, you're going to get tired very quickly. So he throws a lot of arm punches to compensate for that, you know, because he, he, just, he simply can't put full power in, all, in the majority of his shots. So, yeah, if he got his weight down to, you know, let's, let's even say 250, right? I think his power might actually improve at 250. Because he knows how to load up on shots. Yeah, he knows how to get more power in his shots. He doesn't just know how to throw the arm punches because he was very in the force behind the shots against Duopa. Um, at 240, 250, he'd be able to throw with full force more often than not. You know, and I think his hand speed would be a lot better. So anyway, 
this is all speculation and pie in the sky at the moment. So yeah, let me know what you guys felt about his performance and where you see him going from here on in, who you see him fighting next. I'd personally be surprised if Eddie Hearn puts Anthony Joshua in with Jerome Miller next. I'd be surprised. I know Eddie Hearn's been talking about it, but I think Eddie Hearn realizes that's a tough fight for Anthony Joshua. I think he realizes that. Uh, so if I'm wrong, if Eddie Hearn puts him in with Miller next, you know, I, I hold my hands up. But I'd be surprised if he does, to be honest with you. <laughs> I think Miller is a very, very strong guy. And Joshua's got bigger fights out there, financially bigger fights. You know, he's got Wilder out there. He's got Povetkin out there. Even the Dylan White rematch. These are fights which would probably make Anthony Joshua more money. And... I mean, some people would say they're more dangerous, at least Povetkin and Wilder are more dangerous than Miller, some people would say. But there's more reward there. I think the risk-reward is more favorable in those fights. Against Jarrell Miller, what credit is Anthony Joshua going to get for beating Miller? Like, people are just going to say, you beat up on a fat guy, so what? You know, no one's really going to give him any credit for that. Uh, it would build his profile in the United States because Miller is such a vocal character. But... Again, he's among the boxing contingent. No one's really going to be, because I think people underrate Miller, no one's really going to be very impressed if Andy Joshua beats Jarrell Miller. And it's not a massively lucrative fight. It's not going to be pay-per-view in the United States, I wouldn't imagine. So, you know, um, I'll be surprised if that fight happens next. But we'll see. Eddie Hearn says, if he can't get the, the Wilder fight made this year, then it's going to be Jarrell Miller. So, um, I don't know, man. If you can't get a Wilder fight made this year, shouldn't it be Povetkin? Because Povetkin is mandatory and he's trying to enforce it right now with the WBA. You know? So, yeah, let me know how you feel, people. I'm out.